Alhamdulillah <laughs> فلا أقسم فلا أقسم بمواقع النجوم وإنه لقسم لو تعلمون عظيم صدق الله العظيم فقال النبي الكريم صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد brothers and sisters as we stand here or sit here hungry and thirsty there's one reality that comes to mind very often which is that in spite of having so much strength, in spite of having so much in terms of blessings that our brothers and sisters in different places don't have, in spite of having as much food as we could possibly want available to us, just like that, in spite of all these things, we are not necessarily in control to be able to have those things or to enjoy those things. One of the benefits of fasting is that it reminds us very clearly who is in charge, who is it that controls all. Because yes, I very much could take a bite of food and nobody would know, but Allah would know. And in that moment, if I was to do something that Allah was displeased with, the reality is that I would lose complete control of my life. <coughs> because then I'm going to be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm going to be answering for things in a way that I will not be pleased with the outcome of. So when you begin to exercise the fast in the most beneficial way, you start to realize the lack of control that you have. And you know, this idea of control is something that our, in our modern society we, we try to really hold on to. People are always so focused on, I got to take care of this and I got to do this. And if I can just get to this point, then I'll be able to have this. And we're always trying to move up because we want more mobility, we want more wealth, we want something. But the problem too often is we think that we have this within our grasp. We think that the end result of our actions is because of us. When the reality is that anything that happens is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a narration in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba where he talks about a man in the court of Suleiman alayhi salam. Suleiman famously he would control the wind and more importantly he would have a court wherein different species, not just species but different animals as well as different creatures would come and gather well, from the jinn and even from other angels and animals. So in Suleiman court a man once was there and he's standing and he realizes that there is somebody kind of looking at him strangely and as he's 
kind of looking around. He's going back to what he's doing. He looks back again. He sees this individual still <clears throat> staring at me. And he begins to get a little freaked out, a little worried. Why is this guy looking at me like this? What's going on? And continues and continues to do so and continues to, to just do what he's doing until he finally gets to a point where he gets so disturbed that he goes to Suleiman Ali Salam and he says, please, I need you to send me away because this man is scaring me. This individual is scaring me. <coughs> so Suleiman Ali Salam sends him to a far away land using the wind. And when he gets to this land, immediately this man dies. And what Suleiman Ali Salam later finds out is that the man who was staring at him was Malik al Maut. He was the angel of death in the form of a human being. So Suleiman salam asked him, he said, what were you doing? Why were you staring at this man the whole time? What, what exactly were you, you know, trying to accomplish? And Malik al Maut said that I was here because this man's time had almost come. And Allah had told me that I would take his life in this faraway land and I was really confused how I was going to take his life in this faraway land when he was standing right here in your court. And he said, then he asked you to send him and Allah's decree passed. And therefore I took his life in the land where I was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What this highlights is, is that at the end of the day, we may think we're controlling things in a way that matches what we want. We may think that we're trying to set up our lives in a way that is really going to be beneficial for us. But the truth is, is that the end result of any action is not because of us. It is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed it to occur. When we can accept this, when we can realize this, this allows us to live more freely. Because the truth is, is that there are people out there who are killing themselves. Killing themselves every single day thinking they can achieve something that may never be written for them. And they'll get frustrated and they'll get stressed and they'll get worried because they're not getting to that point that they want to in their lives. And what's the end result? Then they die unhappy. They die upset because they were never able to accomplish the thing that was never intended for them to accomplish. But when we can take a step back, we can realize, you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls the end result. All I'm responsible for is my effort. My actions, yes, I can put in the time and the energy and the effort, and inshallah, Allah will give me what I'm seeking. But if He doesn't give me what I'm seeking, you can guarantee one thing, He's going to give you something better. It's not a debate, it's not a question of if, it's a question of yes, He's going to give you this, but when is the question. The verses that I wanted to very quickly go through, they reflect this idea of control for us. And in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about these different aspects by asking questions to us. That He says, أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تُمْنُونَ That do you see that which gives life, the fluid that you give out from your body that gives life, that comes together with an egg and develops a, a, a child and brings a child to life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَأَنْتُمْ تَخْلَقُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْخَالِقُونَ Did you create that? Or did I create that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Then later he continues here. How about a seed? You take a seed and you put it into the ground and you have hope. Maybe I'll get something out of this. I'll plant a fruit tree and I'll be able to get the crop from it. I'll plant some vegetables in a garden and I'll be able to collect these vegetables and eat something that's pure, that's healthy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us a question because we take it for granted. Are you the one who makes the seed sprout? Do you reach into the ground and pull out that germinated seed? Or am I the one who brings it to life? Am I the one who when you put it into the ground, I allow it to come out from this ground? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَجَعَلْنَاهُ حُطَامًا فَظَلْتُمْ تَفَكَّهُونَ Then he says that if you only had think thought about this, you would realize that truly Allah could make it so that nothing comes out for you. You don't have any kind of crops coming for this. You wouldn't be given anything. Inna <inaudible> That you would be deprived of this. You would not be given the things that you want. Then he says, أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْزَلْتُمُوهُمْ to me. He says, أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ الْمَاءَ الَّذِي تَشْرَبُونَ How about the water that you drink every single day? Where does that water come from? أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْزَلْتُمُوهُمْ مِنَ الْمُزْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a very simple question. This water that you drink, 
Are you somebody who, that you go to the clouds and you say, hey, we need some water right here. Can you bring it down? Can you please tell the clouds to come to this land? Because there's a bit of a drought here. Oh, clouds, can you come to this place? Allah is asking a question. Do you do that? Or does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send those clouds? Does the water come down where Allah tells it to? Because as of now, there are places in the world that are suffering from drought. There are places that do not have water. They don't have the very basic foundations of life that are required to be able to survive. And yet the water isn't coming down. In spite of all the technology we have, all the devices, all the things that we say that we're so advanced because of, we still can't go to a cloud and tell it, just bring the water here. Why? Because this is in Allah's control. This is not in our control. This is what He decides. Where it goes is where He decides. <laughs> How about the fire that you strike? The fires that you, be, you burn? Is that fire something? Did you create the fuel for it? Did you create the trees that you use to, to, to burn a fire? Did you create the, the gasoline, the fuel that you use to light your stove? Whether you light a match, whatever it is, did you create that? Allah says. Or did I create that? And in the midst of all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can see here, He's setting it up for something. That He's asking us these questions to make us reflect. This is what the Qur'an is about. It's for us to be able to reflect, to think, you know what? I actually didn't have any control in terms of this water that I have. The reservoirs that we have full of water, I didn't decide that the water should come down in that place. The, all the, the trees and the things that we burn, the gasoline and the fuel that I have, I'm not the one who created that. So I, I, maybe, maybe I don't control as much as I thought I did. Maybe I don't have as much power as I thought I did. And in that moment when we can reach this place of recognition that, you know what, I don't have as much power as I thought. I don't have as much authority as I thought. I can then very clearly and very easily say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no power, there is no authority except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. In the midst of this, uh, again, before we get to the next part, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says something very interesting here. That I take an oath by the place of each and every single star. I take an oath by the place of each and every single star. Now, you might look at the night sky and see the billions and trillions of stars that exist out there. If you can find a place that doesn't have as much pollution as we have and you find some nice natural area and you go there, you can see stars everywhere. If you were to even count them, you'd spend days and days, if not months, just trying to count every single one. But that's not what's interesting. What's really interesting is what we understand today in terms of science, that the stars that we see in the night sky, many of them don't even exist anymore. It's just that their light is only reaching us now. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, every single star you see, I take an oath by the place that it is right now and those that are not there. I take an oath by every single one. And this is a great oath if you only knew. Because how many stars is it that we see in the night sky that don't exist anymore? How many stars is it that we see in the night sky that have moved to a different place now? This is just a small reality, a small recognition of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He can take an oath by such a thing that we cannot even begin to comprehend all of it. And he also mentions, That he gives a clear endorsement, or he speaks to the elegance and the beauty of the Qur'an, that this is an honored Qur'an. And right now, as we sit here today, we're in the month of the Qur'an. We're in a time where the Qur'an is meant to be listened to. The Qur'an is meant to be recited. It's meant to be something we are reflecting on this month. Not just because I hear it recited nicely, but more so because I'm beginning to understand what the Qur'an says. If I can't understand the Arabic, 
then at the very least, I'm picking up that translation that I can understand, and I'm reading through it. I'm learning what it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Because any person, if someone was to come to you and tell you, I believe in this book, you would say, well, what does it say? If somebody was to say, well, I have no idea what it says, I haven't actually read it, you'd call them a fool. You would absolutely call that person a fool. And yet we have this idea that we can simply live our lives believing in the Qur'an without engaging with it, without actually reading it, without actually understanding it. And this is fallacious, this is foolish. We have to be able to learn the Qur'an. We have to learn the Arabic for the purposes of recitation and getting the reward of it, but also be able to understand what it says. Whether that means learning further Arabic or that means just picking up a translation of the Qur'an. So we can actually know what it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us. So that we can actually reflect on it as we're supposed to and as we're meant to reflect on it. At the conclusion then of these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suddenly gives us a very, very powerful reminder of who's in control. He slowly set it up. Do you see that which you emit? Do you see those plants that you plant? Do you see the water that you, that you drink so easily? Do you see this fire that you ignite and you light so easily? And he's telling us, I am the one who created every single thing that you take for granted. But then he gives us these verses. <laughs> if when the time comes that you are, your soul is reaching up to your throat, your soul is at the point where it's about to leave your body, death has come to you. You're laying on this final place, this final deathbed, and if people are surrounding you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ Everybody is surrounding you. Everybody is looking at you. Everybody is seeing what exactly is happening to you. They're reciting Surah Yasin. They're waiting for your final moments to come. Then he says, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ And rather in that moment you see everybody around you, but we are closer to you. But you cannot even begin to realize this. You can't see how close Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to you in that moment. How close you are to death. The decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming to bring your life to an end. فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you think that you created all the things that were mentioned before, if you think you have such power and you have such authority and you have such ability, if you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the one who's fully in control, if you think that you are not his servant and his slave in every sense of the word, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in kuntum Take your soul in that moment and put it back into your body. Take your soul in that moment as it's leaving your body. Everybody's around you. The last rites are being taken and done for you. In that very moment, if you have such control, if you have such authority, take your soul and bring it back into your body. But you'll never be able to do it. It's not something that'll be possible for anyone to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not even give any reference to this. He doesn't respond to this. He just continues on talking about the one who then dies in that moment. That if they're from the righteous, then they'll be given a good ending. They'll be given an opportunity to enter Jannah. And those who are from the right side, who receive their books in their right hands, then they will get greetings of peace. They'll get peaceful greetings from those of the right, their fellow believers, their fellow Muslims. If they're from those who lied, who were misguided, then they will have a descent into a boiling fire. They will have a descent into a boiling fire. And into a being constantly punished within this fire. This is the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. So for the one who accepts, recognizes and believes in Allah's authority, who can say, وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ This person, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى is somebody who will be saved. They'll receive greetings of peace. They'll receive their book in their right hand instead of in their left hand. But those who receive their book in their left hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they're not going to be able to, to have any benefit. 
The only benefit that they're going to have is an eternal life, but it's worthless when it's full of punishment. <laughs> this is an absolute truth and certainty. <laughs> so then glorify your Lord, the absolutely most high, the absolutely great. This is what the end result of it is. This is what the reminder is for. Is that we recognize, you know what? Maybe I don't have as much control as I thought. Maybe I'm not as in charge as I felt like I was before. And then I can realize this and I can have the humility to accept this. And if I do so, then I'll be able to then be of those who receive their books in their right hand. The truth will be apparent to me. And then I'll be able to finish my life, end my life by simply praising and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we recognize what our place in this life is, brothers and sisters, when we recognize how little control we truly have, it sets us on the path to be able to earn Allah's forgiveness. It sets us on the path to be able to recognize Allah's true authority and His power. And it also protects us from being in the situation that so many right now in this world who are stuck in a rat race towards nothing, who are stuck living a life that has no good end to it, where it saves and protects us from being in that life. It saves us from being those mice in a cage with nothing to show for it at the end of our life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for all of our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open all of our hearts and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with yaqeen and understanding of this Qur'an. Wa sallam lahumma ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru lahali wa kum nisa'il muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu wa ghafuru rahim. Brothers and sisters, this time of Ramadan, this is the time to start to rectify our soul. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this month, but in spite of the fact that we are given a very clear set of commands, fast from sunrise until sunset, in spite of the fact that we have more of a burden, more of a responsibility, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to remember, is al-Rahman al-Rahim. That He is, in spite of giving us more challenges, giving us more work to do, when He does so, He also gives us a constant increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this month is a time for you to fast so you can come closer to me. And in that, in spite of the fact that you have more work, you're also going to get a lot more reward. When you think about the fact that your boss, whoever it is, your teacher, someone in your life, your parents even, you do something extra for them. They give you some extra work. What are they going to say to you when you're done? Your parents, you go to them, you say, hey, I did that extra work you asked me to do. They're going to say, okay, what do you want, a pat on the back? What, you want some, something for it? You have a roof over your head. You have food in your belly. Why are you trying to get something extra? Right? But then if it's your, your teacher, you go to them, you say, I did this extra work. Okay, good job. That's just to keep your grade afloat. Just to keep things normal. Your boss, you go to them, I did this extra work. What do you want to raise? That doesn't sound happening. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you need to fast. But here's the thing. Not only are your deeds worth almost 700, if not more times what they're normally worth. Not only are the shayateen locked up. Not only is this a time for you to be able to earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. But the gates of hellfire are closed for the believers. The gates of paradise are wide open for the believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever puts any responsibility on us except that He gives us something. He gives us extra. This is what Ar Rahman Ar Rahim does. He constantly gives and gives and gives and gives. And when we recognize this, when we understand this, <coughs> it allows us to be able to truly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with gratitude. With gratitude. That I don't have to be stuck in the rat race like everybody else. I don't have to simply just fast and, and do things with no extra benefit behind it. I don't have to just do things for no reason. I don't have any strange 
rituals that I do that don't have any purpose behind them. Everything I do as a believer has a purpose behind it. Everything I do as a believer is something that will benefit me and will help me. And it makes logical sense. This is the blessing of Islam. This is what this deen gives us. And when we can take that step back from the rest of the world around us, and we can recognize the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we can recognize and take advantage of the fact that, you know what, I'm not in control of the things that I thought I was in control of, and that's okay. All I need to do is put my best effort forth. And the question people will usually ask is, oh, well, if I don't control anything, well, then why do I need to put any effort in? That's a very simple answer. Because this, if you don't put any effort, if you're someone who's lazy like that, Allah has already written what's going to come for you based on who you are. Which means the end result then is going to be that you don't get anything. There may very well be a few exceptions. There may be some people who do nothing and end up hitting the jackpot. There might be some people who do this and that. But you don't make rules for exceptions. You don't make rules for people who exist on the boundaries of what actually occurs in life. So then... Take that reality, take that check of reality from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and use it in your life. When something happens that you didn't want to happen, you take a step back and say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That yes, I'm going to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This life is temporary. Whatever happens, it's okay because it's not the end of the world. It's not something that's going to end my life. It's okay, and I'll be able to move on, and at the end of the day, I'll be able to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and none of this stuff will be a concern anymore. When you have something good happen to you, say, Alhamdulillah, remember the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment, and recognize, you know what? At the, the Prophet sallallahu told us very clearly, Ajaban li amr mu'min. I'm astounded by the affair of the believer, that in the amra kulluhu khayr, every single matter for the believer is good. If something that we see as good happens for us and we're grateful for it, we say, Ya Allah, thank you so much, alhamdulillah, for this blessing, that it's good for us. And if something that we see is bad happens to us and we are patient upon it, we say, it's okay, I'm going to get through this. Allah is in control. He will never abandon me. He will never leave me because I believe in Him. When I recognize this, that I'm able to be patient through it and the Prophet said, said it'll be good for me. Throughout all of this, the goodness continues for the believer. And so then recognize and have this gratitude of your faith. Have gratitude of the belief and the opportunity that you have right now in this Ramadan. As we approach these last 10 nights of Ramadan, take advantage of them. Put in all the effort that you can to be able to earn the reward. So that when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can say, Ya Allah, I did everything that I could. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and accept this Ramadan from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this month something that allows us to be able to come closer to Him. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim ibn Muhammad ibn Ibrahim. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim ibn Muhammad ibn Ibrahim. ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإنما تغفرنا وتحملنا وكنا من الخاسرين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتوب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله لا لم يذكركم مشكل يزدكم واستغفروا يغفر لكم واتقوا يجعل لكم من أمكم مخرجا وكم الصلاة Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu Allah, Ilaha